taking action on the agenda item. All of the MPC board's zoning recommendations are submitted to either the city council or the parish commission for a final decision, depending on the location of the property in question. Please note that it is your responsibility to contact the appropriate governing body about their procedures as related to the matter you are concerned with. Copies of this document and the phone number to contact the governing bodies are available uh, next to the table on the, on the podium and uh, the entryway into this room. As a courtesy, please remember to turn off cell phones while the MVC board is in session. The commission values your testimony and appreciates your compliance with these guidelines. At this particular time, uh, we'll call for a motion of approval of minutes from the August 2022 meeting. Second. Motion by Mrs. Uh, McCullough and second by Mr. Moss. All those in favor, please vote yes. That motion is approved. Thank you very much. We will now uh, enter into a schedule of public hearing, starting with item six, case number 22-146-C, zoning request, Moore and Associates. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Terrell Hall uh, here with PhD Enterprise. My address is 3030 Duncan Drive. Uh, and we're here in regards to um, changing the. Uh, we're here in regards to the. Uh, trying to get the address. Yeah, expanding, um, changing the zoning for an apartment complex on 1925 North Market. you just have one speaker at a time if you don't okay mind. first first speaker gets 10 minutes after that each person gets three minutes okay, okay so. all right uh, sir would you state your name again a little, get a little closer to the mic Terrell Hall all right mr. Hall yeah. okay board members any questions for mr. Hall all right mr. Hall thank you is there anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request Anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request? My name is Justin Palmer. I'm also from uh, PhD Enterprise, and um, we are currently developing um, a residential adjoining property behind that property, and um, we're going to expand the front side for commercial usage. Um, we're currently building on the front on the front side, uh, which is a different development, but it's residential and. Um, we're seeking just to expand the ex expand the uh, the commercial side that we can build a decent apartment complex. All right, sir, Mr. Palmer, is that correct? Yes. Any questions for Mr. Palmer, board members? I, I have to get this. Yes, ma'am. Right. I'm just concerned. Have, does my, is my city council person aware? You pull your mic down. Is my city council person aware of this development or this, um, this change? Yeah, well, yes, she's There's aware. There's been some discussion with my we've city had, council. We've had multiple discussions with city council, yes, ma'am. Okay, and so it seems like they, she supports this? Um, I would say she does, but um, I would say that she does. Okay. She's absolutely aware of the residential side, for, for sure, portion of this, for sure. Um, oh. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions for Mr. Palmer? Anyone else? All right, thank you, sir. Is there anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request? Anyone else present who care to speak in favor? All right, is there anyone present who care to speak in opposition to this request? Anyone present who care to speak in opposition to this request? Hearing none, board members, what's your pleasure? Move to approve. Second. Second. 
Okay. We have a motion by Mr. Moss and second by uh, Ms. Jackson. All those in favor, please vote yes. Opposition to vote no. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That request has been approved. We will now move to case uh, number 22-150C, Small Plan Unit Development and Site Plan, Vintage Design and Group. Good afternoon. My name is Joe Salpetra. I'm the co-owner of Providence Lot 2, um, and we've got this request to, it's within a planned unit development, and there was a um, provision that was not part of that planned unit development, so this application is to add the provision to um, include alcohol sales um, inside of a cigar lounge. All right, sir, Mr. Salpetro. Board members, you heard the request. Any questions or concerns? All right, Mr. Salpetro, I'm trying to my best to say that correctly. You did great. All right, is there anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request? Anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone present who care to speak in opposition to this request? Anyone present who care to speak in opposition to this request? All right, seeing none, board members, what's your pleasure? Motion by? Second. All right, motion by Mr. Balderis, second by Ms. Uh, McCullough. All those in favor, please vote yes, opposition's no. <coughs> Hit it yet? I didn't get to hit it and it went away. Okay. Would you put it back up again, please, so Ms. McCullough can vote? There you go. All right. All right. Are we good, Madam Secretary? They have to, they have to place their votes again. Say it 10, please. Pull your mic down. Place them again. They have to place their votes again. Everyone vote again, please. All right, thank you very much. That motion carries. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. I always like to make the board aware of past MPC and ZBA board members. Uh, and I might truly be dating myself, but Mr. Sapitra was a Zoning Board of Appeals board member uh, sometimes back. Well, great. Many years ago, and that's why I said I might be dating myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad to have you on that side of the microphone. Thank you very much. It's different being on this side. It's a little different, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right, very good. Uh, if there's no other uh, comments, we'll move on to the next case. I believe we're at um, case number eight. Case 22-162-C, Rhodes Realty. introduction your first person gets 10 minutes the second person gets three okay yes sir thank you all right we're ready for you okay uh carlos hartwell 6116 when canton drive shreveport louisiana i am a real estate agent representing uh attorney jacqueline scott we purchased i wanted to kind of wait until you got the paperwork in we'll be hand. glad to wait thank okay you. <laughs> yeah wait one minute. all right Need one more? No, second. Okay. 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 Need 
So uh, if you'll open up to that first page, or the second page actually, on the left, that's a building that Ms. Jacqueline purchased about a month ago, in July, right? To the right of Lexington Avenue, where it says Bossier Village Lane Properties, LLC, those are two uh, lots that we are wanting to get, have rezoned so that she can put uh, property that will help with the uh, main structure that she just purchased on the left side. So if she has an event, she'd like to have extra parking as well as uh, short-term housing for those people that uh, have rented it and then a meeting area underneath it. So that's what we are requesting today. All right, board members, questions? do you have any questions for Mr. Hartwell before the next speaker comes up? Any questions for Mr. Hartwell? Yeah. All right, Mr. Moss. When you say short-term limit, are you saying something like an Airbnb or something like that? More of whoever is the guest that of the building where, that she has just purchased. Okay. So if, let's give an example of a wedding. So we want a place for them to change clothes okay. and not have to be, you know, so that. Okay, thank you. Anyone else with questions, comments? I pushed my button. Is it not working? With the rules. I appreciate that, but my little device here is saying blank, so please go right ahead, Mr. Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Hartwell and Ms. Scott. Nice to see you. Um, have you met with the neighbors? Yes, sir. We had a, I, can, I have a copy of that also. Is it the NPP? Yes, sir. We had the Neighborhood one. Participation Plan. That's it. We had one, yes, sir. And how would you characterize their response? Went great. Uh, everyone was for it. Uh, one guy said he just wanted to make sure we had the uh, proper security. And uh, we plan on having, uh, she plans on having a security guard there during events, as well as when nothing is going on, visual and audio uh, surveillance. And some kind of boundary between the, the commercial use and the residential use? What do you mean as far as a boundary? Say to the south, where the people live. Oh, yes, yes, sir. And how would you describe that boundary? The same way the, uh, as the, uh, I don't know, you can't really see it on that picture, but a fence, an okay. iron fence. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. Any more questions for Mr. Hartwell? All right. Ms. McCullough? I don't have a question, but I would like to take this opportunity to express birthday wishes to Attorney Scott's daughter today from the MPC board. <laughs> it is today. <laughs> we haven't gotten her to the microphone yet. <laughs> Everybody's jumping Thank you to go. Okay. Ms. Scott, we'll get you up there in just a second. Let us finish with uh, okay. Mr. Hartwell. I know you know what we're trying to do, don't you? All right, Mr. Hartwell, any other comments from Mr. Hartwell? Questions? All right, sir, you may relinquish the mic. Next person, please. Good afternoon. Good for, afternoon. For the record, I'm Jacqueline Scott, 401 Hamilton Road, Suite 10, Boulder City. I also <laughs> just purchased the property uh, at 111 um, Piermont Road and 115. I don't know if you all know, it was the old Allegro uh, print shop. There is about an uh, acre lot is gated. Uh, we will have, right now we have a fence, so eventually we'll have some more division between us and the neighbors. I plan to do something very well uh, that will enhance the surrounding areas, and I appreciate your support. Um, this, the adjacent property would further enhance my plan of what I, tried to, what I will try to do for the area, and I appreciate that you all will uh, consider it as positive and vote for us to be able to uh, zoning as such. Before anybody else says anything, I believe Ms. McCullough has a comment to make to you. <laughs> I'll repeat it. Make sure you express to your daughter a birthday wish from the PC board. Oh, thank you so very much. Thank you. Today's her birthday, right? Today is her birthday. Okay. So I canceled everything so I can be here to see you all. Wow. And she understands. Okay. She, she has moved to pay. Dallas, so I want to bring She's gonna eventually to come back. She's going to make you pay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, board members, any questions relative to the uh, uh, 
request before us today. No questions? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank Is there anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request? Thank you all. Is there anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request? Is there anyone present who care to speak in opposition to this request? Do we have any opposition to this request? All right, hearing none, we'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. McCullough and second by Mr. Moss. All those in favor, please vote yes. Oppositions, no. That motion carries. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. The next item on our agenda is case number 22-163-C, special use permit and site plan, and that would be uh, Embos LLC. My name is Mike Landry. I live at uh, 286 Stonehaven Drive in Frierson. Uh, the owner just told me about an hour ago he couldn't make it. But anyway, uh, it's uh, Puro Clean is a, you know, is, is a business and all we want to do is special use permit for a contractor's office that would be what surround that area anyway. And so that's what we're asking for that permit. All right, sir, Mr. Landry. Are there any questions for Mr. Landry? No questions from board members? All right, Mr. Landry, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Is there anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request? Anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request? Thank you very much. Um, how are you this afternoon? Uh, Thomas Carmody. Um, I've actually worked with the property owners here at 668 Burke Coons for a number of years and the contractor is not here and available today but the gentleman did a nice job of explaining it. Really that's what they're looking to use is basically in conjunction with what the other zoning is in the area and if y'all had any questions I'd be happy to answer them. Do us a favor and give us your address please. Oh I'm so sorry Thomas Carmody 440 Albert Avenue Shreveport 71105. I've forgotten the first thing. That's quite all right. Board members, any questions for Mr. Carmen? Questions? Hearing none, thank, thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Is there anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request? Anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request? Hearing none, is there anyone present who care to speak in opposition to this request? Any opposition to this request? All right, hearing on board members, what's your pleasure? I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Elberson. Second. Second by Ms. Jackson. All those in favor, please vote yes. Oppositions, no. Board members, thank you very much. That motion passes. Case number 22-122. Dash C zoning request cross development. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ryan Estes, 4913 uh, with Rayleigh and Associates, 4913 Shed Road, uh, Bossier City, Louisiana, 71111. Here on behalf of the developers. Uh, to answer any questions y'all may have uh, on this uh, rezoning case. All right, board members. Obviously, this is a good day to be making requests, if you've noticed. Yes. All right. Is there anyone else present who care to speak uh, on request on in favor of this request? Anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request? Anyone present who care to speak in opposition to this request? Any opposition to this request? All Mr. right, Chair, hearing none. Mr. Chair, before yes, you sir. vote, just once again, if you're interested, it's about the seventh page in your packet is a email from Councilman John Nicholson and Councilman Grayson Butcher 
uh, attesting to the fact that they agree with the recommendation by staff to rezone this property to C4 and uh, they look forward to it being returned to council for approval. All right, thank you very much. And one of the wonderful persons from that neighborhood is in the audience if uh, <laughs> you'd like to get reaffirmation uh, of that uh, because there was just some concerns about where the actual zoning would be occurring. Okay, where was I? Didn't mean to throw you off, sir. <laughs> okay, it's all right. I think I called for a, 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 no questions, no, question. no, no question. opposition. Mm -mm. At this particular time, board members, what's your pleasure? I'd like to make a motion to approve. Motion by Ms. Jackson. Second. Sec second by Mr. Moss. All those in favor, please vote yes. Oppositions vote no. All right, that motion carries. Thank you, sir. At this particular time, I believe we're down to case number 22-9-CTAC, Code Text Amendment, Mr. Adam Bailey. If you would like Mr. Bailey to reaffirm or re-explain uh, the case, he's more than happy to. Uh, you, it's at your pleasure, Mr. Chair. Board members, you have heard the explanation relative to this particular uh, <coughs> recommendation. Are there any additional questions or concerns at this time? None. None. None? Mm -hmm. Okay, but Mr. Uh, Robertson. For the benefit of the audience, audience yeah. shouldn't we explain what we're doing here? Mr. Bailey, would you give us a brief explanation, please? Adam Bailey, MPC staff. 505 Travis Suite 440. Uh, the cotex in front of you uh, right now uh, deals with surfacing requirements found in Article 8. Is that right? Close. Yes, Article 8 of the uh, UDC. Uh, currently, gravel and rock are not allowed as a surface uh, through cooperation with the city engineer uh, who helped write this amendment. Uh, the amendment allows for a surface approved by the city engineer uh, that's other than concrete or asphalt uh, and, and but it does still require an apron uh, same goes for single family in the RA district uh, there are penalties if any um, surface material runs into the right-of-way or into the drainage system all the way from revoking a certificate of occupancy by the zoning administrator uh, also water and sewer director can uh, cut off water to the property and the director of public works can block access to it and until those uh, remedies causing the surface runoff are fixed um, then whatever is enforcement would not be put back in place until those remedies were fixed. Sorry if that was confusing. Um, pretty much that's it. Do you have any questions? Mr. Bailey. Um, Mr. G. <clears throat> the commercial um, aspect that you described earlier is limited only to I-1 and I-2. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Bailey, board members, any additional comments beyond what Mr. Bailey just shared with us? All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bailey. Um, I suppose at this point we would offer any comments or concerns. Uh, we, we, this was a collaborative effort that I'm sure that the board would be extremely proud of. A collaborative effort be, between the Department of Water and Sewage, the Department of Public Works, uh, the City Engineer's Office, within the Office of Department of Public Works and the MPC to come up with a solution to a pressing problem that the city has been facing and that's the parking of uh, 18 Willows uh, throughout the city. Uh, we hope that uh, if you are so inclined to recommend approval of this uh, uh, code text amendment that this will uh, lighten some of the pressures that truck drivers throughout the city are finding and finding adequate and appropriate parking for their rigs. This is just an opportunity for the city to be proactive. All right, sir. 
Any other comments or questions? <coughs> All right, this particular time, board members, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. Yes? Sure to public public I appreciate that. I was kind of fishing for that, but nobody said anything. <laughs> Thank you, Counselor. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are present, you've heard the, the recommendation from Mr. Bailey, and this would be moving forward from the board uh, depending on how it's voted. Are there persons present who requested to speak on this particular subject? If you have, please raise your hand. All right. No one's interested in this particular Cotex amendment. At this particular time then, board members, what's your pleasure? I'd like to make approval. a motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Robinson, second by Ms. Jackson. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please vote yes. Oppositions, vote no. All right, that motion carries. Uh, Mr. Executive Director, I'm concerned now as to the, the audience that's present and what their uh, interest is for today. Do you have a uh, comment slip, sir? Yes, sir. I think you will entertain, I think they will want to speak at public comment. Uh, uh, it, it's a situation where I think that their comments uh, will be for inappropriate for this board they would be more appropriate for the Caddo Parish Planning and Zoning Commission, but at the public comment section is when anyone in the public that has a comment can come and address you. Thank you very much. I was fishing for a little bit of help there, just a little bit. Thank you so much. At this particular time, that ends the public hearing, but for those of you who are here who are choosing to make public comments, give us just a few more minutes and we'll be down to the public comment section of the agenda that you may or may not have in front of you. All right? All right, Mr. Clark, <clears throat> is there an old business? There is no old business uh, at this point, Mr. Chair. All right, at this particular time, I would like to ask permission from the board to, uh, because it's not on the agenda and it's uh, apparently my fault that it's not on there. We had assigned uh, at your request a nominating committee uh, to uh, act uh, in the, uh, between August meeting and this meeting, but because it's not on the agenda, we'll entertain a motion to accept, uh, uh, to open the floor for the committee to make a report at this time. So moved. Second. We have a motion by uh, Mr. Robertson and second by Ms. McCullough to, ac to accept uh, the opportunity for board members uh, assigned to the nominating committee spokesperson for that committee to make a report. All those in favor, please vote <coughs> yes. Oppositions, no. Well, at this particular time, I believe Mr. Harold Seda, all right, that motion carries, has been appointed to make a presentation to the board. This particular time, the recommendation that he'll make is from the nominating committee. Once that's done, we'll open the floor for additional nominations to that particular position on the board that fills the seat from now through December 31st, 2022. And uh, if there are other uh, nominations, we'll accept those and include those with that report that he's making and then we'll vote and we'll fill the seat for vice chair and secretary for the board from now through December, the end of December, 2022. Any questions? Hearing none, we'll turn the mic over to Mr. Harold Seda. The committee met and we nominated Bill Robertson to become the vice chairman and Ms. Rose McCullough to be the secretary. All right, board members, hearing that report, any questions? Before we move forward, the floor is open for nominations for vice chair in addition to the report that was presented. Hearing none, we'll move to the secretary slot. We have uh, Ms. McCullough was nominated to be the secretary. Are there any other nominations for the position of secretary from now through December of 2022? Hearing none, we'll accept a motion from the board members to accept these persons to fill those slots from now through the end of December. Do I have a motion? Move to accept the nomination. Second. Motion by Mr. Elberson, second by Mr. Moss. All those in favor, please vote yes. Oppositions, no. 
that motion is carried. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for assisting us in that particular process in an effort to save time. And I'm going to in challenge that same committee so that we won't have to reappoint a nominating committee at the end of the year to identify nominees for offices for 2023 to please be, uh, be uh, in a position to make a report, consider yourself nominated as a nominating committee again uh, to uh, take a look at officers for 2023 and be prepared at the appropriate time to make a recommendation. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Mr. Clark, as we move down the agenda, anything else? We discussed uh, in the pre-briefing meeting, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, just because it's still on the agenda, uh, the uh, request by Mr. Robertson in reference to the MPC's investigation of the possible conflicts between the Shreveport Master Plan, 2030 Great Expectations, and the 2045 Transportation Improvement Plan authored by the Northwest Louisiana Council of Governments. Uh, after receiving this information, uh, uh, I assigned this task to the uh, Community Planning Division. Uh, they immediately uh, uh, established contact with the North Louisiana uh, Council of Governments uh, to find information out concerning the 2045 Transportation Improvement Plan. And instead of this being an agenda item, once we have information for the board, we will bring that information back as he has requested and present it to the board. All right, sir. Thank you very much. I believe we're down to the director's report. Any reports uh, that you care to make? You all have corrected me in each meeting, so I'm not going to miss seeing Reginald Jordan today. <laughs> and I'm going to ask him to give you all an update of uh, certificates of occupancies uh, and uh, complaints uh, that are happening. Mr. Reginald? All right. <clears throat> all right. Uh, from the, the, the last time that we met, August 3rd until today, we have issued 36 home base certificates of occupancy and 20 commercial certificates of occupancy. So year to date, uh, that's 254 for the home <coughs> base and 243 for the commercial. Uh, as far as violations go, uh, from last month we've issued uh, 40 and year to date is 393. Any questions? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir, Mr. Robinson. Uh, Mr. Jordan, is there an update on the um, the multicolored signs? You know the the oh, oh, they were oh, they have been been either being prosecuted or be, and came into compliance. Okay, very good. Thank you. All I right. haven't seen any. Uh, are there still uh, signs still out there? I don't want to say there's not. But if, if, if it is, it's few and far between. I haven't seen any of us since we went into prosecutory uh, processes. Uh, they seem to have all been removed and disappeared. Well, all right, sir, thank you very much. Thank you for that report. Mr. Clark, I believe, I don't want to usurp your responsibility, but I believe we've got a smiling young lady, young lady sitting in the second row near the front. You want to introduce her? I will introduce her one more time, Mr. Chair. We're so happy. Uh, to have Alexis DeJohn uh, added to our uh, land use planning staff. Alexis uh, comes from uh, the state of Mississippi. Uh, I think it was Madison, Mississippi uh, originally. And she attended uh, Jackson State University. Uh, uh, and uh, because of her, uh, there are some white people up here that attempted to intimidate her. but. We welcome her to our city. I promised the people in the planning, to the planning at Jackson State that I would protect her away from these Southern and Grambling people, but uh, we're just very happy to have her here. And we're looking for great things coming from Alexis. All right, thank you very welcome, sweetheart. Welcome to our staff. Um, 
All right, then, Mr. Clark. I believe we're down to that thing about public okay. comments. Yes, sir. I, I'll, I'll, my comments are over. Okay. All right. Public comments. So, young man, would you read off the names? I believe you had some there. Uh, um, is Miss uh, Constance Green here? All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm my do I proceed? <laughs> my name is Constance L. Green. Of course, I reside at the 4475 Rice Road here in Shreveport, Louis. Would you pull that mic down so we can hear I you? I will be glad to. Is Thank that you. better? Don't need to pull it down some more? Okay. okay. I reside at 4475 Rice Road in Shreveport, Louisiana. Shreveport has been my home since birth <laughs> and has also been the product of my two daughters that live in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I'm here today because um, there has been some development on the Rice Road that we, the Rice Road residents, were not aware of. This important matter is not on the agenda, so if this is not the correct timing to discuss it, I would be more than glad to uh, come back and, and have it officially put on the agenda. But approximately 2014, we, the Rice Road residents, had a problem with a trailer park or a potential trailer park being erected on the property. I am not new to Shreveport, but I've been on Rice Road since 2006 when I purchased approximately 50 acres there and have um, developed quite a substantial um, piece of property. Rice Road um, also have some property there that is owned um, by persons that do not live in the area. And back in 2014, they began to um, proceed with erecting a trailer park. The same persons that own that property have since sold land where people have built uh, approximately $300,000 residences, uh, homes where they're going to build their families. Um, we're here to ask that um, whatever has transpired since the last 2014 decision here at the MPC, that we would have been made aware that a new trailer park has been erected on the Rice Road. Um, I would say that many of the people that live there are second and third generations where their kids and grandkids uh, will in continue to inherit that property. But another reason it's so important is that we live here in Shreveport and many times we find the things that we don't like, but often we don't discuss those things that we do like. Well, Rice Road, if you come by, you'll see a little turtle running across the road. <laughs> we still do those sorts of things and we still wave at our neighbors. Well, now we have something that will devalue our properties, and we're very concerned about that. <clears throat> Most of the people there are retired, and um, we felt, <laughs> we feel, or we felt very secure in our surroundings and what our goals are. Most people have spent their life savings with building their homes and, and things of that nature. So we're here today because I spoke with Mr. Jordan in the zoning department, and he immediately shared with me that um, he was going to submit a cease and desist for that trailer. It did not and has not taken place. Many times we find things in our community that we disagree with but we have to figure out those things that we can do to make our city whole. So uh, I don't know how many minutes I have, but I need to get this out. But I'm saying that to say Shreveport is great. It is a great place, and we see a lot of our communities looking maybe in a fashion that doesn't represent our town. I do a lot of traveling sometimes, and I decided on that 50 acres, I wanted to build something that would enhance not just Rice Road, but you, yourselves. And 
Rice Rose said, we've done that. But I ask myself, why would someone outside of Rice Road purchase property, come in to build a trailer park, it gets rejected, you come back again and say you're building two-story homes, you don't do that, it gets rejected, you come back again, and you sell these people this property, they've built their beautiful two-story homes, and then the same people get a permit for a modular home, which is actually a trailer. Now, if you know anything about movables and immovables, when you look at real estate, it's, an Im it's a movable. It is a movable. Now, why would, if you're going to live in that trailer, why would you take your acreage, devalue your property, unless you don't plan to keep it? You, you, unless you don't plan to keep it. So I'm saying that to say, MPC, we need your help. We need your help because just here the other day, I was looking at some of the great and wonderful locations here in our area. And believe it or not, just so happily, I ran across Rails Back. And you all have your cell phones and you all are real good at that. Well, Shreveport has made national news. We have property on Rails Back that is listed for $3,850,000. Shreveport. $3,850,000. $850,000. You're walking away from the microphone. $3,850,000. Shreveport, that's wonderful. That's absolute, absolutely wonderful. And Rice Road and your city and towns can have that too. We need clear communication. We were told on yesterday um, at the um, commissioner's meeting that there was some new ruling that took place back in 2017. If that is indeed the case, we certainly have not been notified. So we are asking today that Mr. Jordan and all of the parties thereof that are a part of this trailer that will devalue our million dollar plus properties like we plan to do just like Rails Back, and we can do it and to bring our kids home. So if you want to really concentrate on this city, concentrate on those things to help make us all whole. And if there is something indifferent, let's have a discussion. But let's not do something that would devalue any person's capability to making this the great Shreveport, Louisiana that it is. Thank you again. Ma'am, before you leave the mic, I need staff to help us to clarify whether, whether this is the venue for well, this request or if we're like I've said Mr. Chair this uh, you know public comment is three minutes we apologize for not activating the clock because uh, this uh, you know this public comment exceeded the, the three minutes but like I was sharing earlier and I shared at the Cattle Parish Commission meeting of yesterday Rice Road is in the part of Rice Road is in the town of Greenwood and the other part of Rice Road is in the unincorporated area of Caddo Parish. Any uh, recommendations to the Caddo Parish Commission will not be made by this body, but will be made by the Caddo Parish Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, the commission on yesterday uh, stated that they were entertaining uh, a couple of things in reference to the, the Rice Road properties. Uh, the, you know, they advised the, the residents that a neighborhood covenant would prevent uh, uh, any type of uh, development that they did not want to occur uh, to happen on Rice Road. And they also uh, shared with me to consider, and we will talk at a later date uh, in reference to in the parish. That's the confusion. This board only deals with the city limits of Shreveport. You have no jurisdiction whatsoever past the city limits of Shreveport. Uh, but the Cattle Parish Planning and Zoning Commission may make recommendations that prohibit, uh, restrict, uh, require special use permits on manufactured homes. Uh, in reference uh, to the comments that were made, we have verified that this is a modular home. Uh, even if it was not a modular home based on the Cattle Parish Unified Development Code. This is on property more than an acre that a manufactured home, which negatively is called a trailer,
but a manufactured home could also be a use by right on this property. So there's nothing we can do but the Cattle Parish Commission, along with the Cattle Parish Planning and Zoning Commission, is considering ordinance amendments, co-tax amendments like you addressed today that will address the concerns of these citizens on Rice Road. Committee. All right, now, just so, we, so you understand, while we're excited to hear your planning and your thoughts for the future, the board for your presentation is not this particular board anymore. It's the Cattle Parish Planning Board, just like Mr. Clark talked about. And that board meets the fourth Wednesday of each month. September 28th. September 28th. Mr. Clark. Yes, ma'am. I know that you were at that meeting on yes, yesterday, so and we certainly thank you for being there. That's what he's telling you. But what I'm asking you now is, we are all a city. All of us collectively make this great place. So if anything has changed from Rice Road, we residents and we are taxpayers should be notified that we will now have trailers. You would like that as well, I'm certain, in your community. And what I'm sharing with you, ma'am, is that nothing has changed. Uh, the, we went through the process of yesterday, but as of the adoption of the Caddo Parish Unified Development Code, manufactured homes were allowed uh, on property, zone rural agriculture, and at least an acre or more. Is that going to be his homestead? Because if that's going to be his homestead, his permanent homestead, then I can certainly see that. But if that is not his her permanent homestead, and that still is off of Everly Road, he's going to sell that property and have 100 mobile homes, trailer homes, and whatever you like to call it. Certainly you wouldn't like that, sir. And, 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 is and it all his I, permanent homestead? All I'm homestead? saying to you, ma'am, is I'm not arguing with you. I'm not arguing, I'm not too, but I'm representing my interests on this my property. This is not the appropriate board But, but what was the appropriate concerns? time when you granted that and you said you had a cease and desist and you didn't follow through? What you're doing is you would not speak with all of the residents on Rice Road. We have a right, sir. I have, I have spoken. No, you haven't, with, sir. I, I think I see him out there, Mr. Friday. Uh, I have spoken with him on a uh, number of occasions. Anyone that called, uh, I was more than happy to discuss this situation with them. And Before what you've done. But we'll welcome you, and Mr. Friday can speak on his behalf and anyone else if they choose. We've done Thank nothing you. but what the law allowed us to do. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, officer. All right. Yes, sir. Please come forward. <clears throat> my name is Richard Friday, and since my name was mentioned, I feel obligated to respond. Would you give us your mailing address, please? I'm sorry. Your mailing address, please. I live at 4645 Rice Road, okay. Shreveport, 71119. Okay, three minutes. Please go right ahead. Three minutes, okay. Uh, I'm the new kid on the block. I'll be at the house there December 19, 2000, December 2019. Now, in approaching this thing, first of all, I disagree until Mr. Clark showed me something. I know a double wide when I see one. Until he shows me something, that as his module home, he told me he got evidence from the manufacturer, from the invoice, that this is a module home. I still don't buy that. I'm old country boy. I know a double wide when I see it. Okay. Uh, last Wednesday, me and Mr. Clark, we've been having a civil conversation. On uh, Thursday, he told me, first of all, uh, I contend that that, that that permit, building permit, is bogus. Mr. Clark first told me, Yes, they lied on the application, or I, I, was, I won't say lie. They falsified the application that they were going to send them a letter, a registered letter, telling them they're going to have to upgrade that mobile home, blah, blah, blah. Next day, Mr. Clark called me, said my staff and I did some extensive research. 
that is a mo uh, modular home. I still disagree. My premise is, if they falsely got a building permit, then that trailer need to be hauled off. I know that's harsh, but if I disobey the law, I expect to be held accountable. And again, I stand here saying again, prove to me, somebody prove to me that that is a modular home. If you prove to me that is a modular home, I'll go to another subject. Otherwise, I still contend that was a false building permit and it shouldn't be out there. Any questions? Can I say one other thing, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir, Mr. Court. Mr. Friday, you have made a public records request. It is in the Parish of Caddo's attorney's office. Once they release or uh, direct us what is, uh, we should be providing you with, you will receive all public documents. I went on your site today, and it didn't say anything about going through an attorney. All I asked was the document that you say you had. You submitted a public records requirement. We submitted that to the Par Caddo Parish Attorney's Office. Once they review it, we will provide you with whatever information they direct us to provide you with. In three days, as the site says? Whatever they tell us to provide you with, if it's uh, today, Tomorrow we will provide you with that information. Within three days, I said. I, I don't your know site when said they, I have an answer within three with days. I shared with you that it's in the Caddo Parish Attorney's Office. Thank you. Anyone else? Is there anyone else who care to speak publicly? All right. Hearing none. Ladies and gentlemen, board members, any other comments that you care to make relative to our agenda today? Well, I wanted to comment uh, to speak to Mr. Uh, what were they? Uh, Mr. Mathis. 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 If not, we'll entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. A motion by Mr. Mall, second by Ms. McCullough. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>